Well, today we had the return to the Brickyard, the Brickyard 400, and I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. We had an awful race with an even worse finish. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything, NASCAR. Well not that long ago we finished up the return to the Brickyard, the Brickyard 400. If you've been following this channel this has been probably my most anticipated race this season mainly because I was curious on how these cars would race and it's also a big event it's a huge race indianapolis motor speedway is probably the most well-known racing venue in the world indianapolis daytona spa if you saw my preview i, I wasn't necessarily expecting the best race i was expecting something very similar to pocono very hard to pass a race that really leans hard on the strategy factor of things. And we got that in a very extreme case. I feel like the strategies were even more of a big deal today than they were last week. And track position was literally everything. It did not matter if you had fresh retires or it doesn't, it didn't matter. The racing today was, like I said, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The racing today was awful. It was beyond awful in my opinion the worst race this season i hate this place this zoo this prison this reality whatever you want to call it i can't stand it any longer that being said there was a couple of standout cars a couple of the toyotas looked pretty strong denny hamlin Ty Gibbs looked pretty quick at points. Martin Truex was really fast, but he had a horrible, unlucky day. He wrecked a couple of times. Also had to serve a penalty at the start of the race. John Hunter Nemechek, he put in a great performance. I don't. He ended up finishing behind the wall because he got involved in a late incident, but he was running top 10 pretty much all race long. Then you had Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott. And I feel like most of the day, these two were... Two of the very few actually making passes in the field. But overall, it was going to come down to strategy. And we know that one team is really great at strategy. And that is Ryan Blaney and that number 12 team with Jonathan Hassler as the crew chief. We're going to, if you didn't know already, if I didn't make it obvious, we are going to, I, I usually talk a lot about the whole entire race, but honestly... We didn't really have any racing this whole race, so we're just going to skip straight to the end because that's what I really want to talk about here. Ryan Blaney had a great strategy going. Same thing with Denny Hamlin and others. Denny Hamlin got caught up in a late incident, unfortunately. And then you had Brad Keselowski, who was really pushing it on fuel. I think he made it 55 laps when the fuel window was between 40 and 45, he really pushed it on fuel. And then on a late restart, the second to last restart of the race, Brad Keselowski was leading the field coming out of turn four. And I guess it sputtered and started to run out of gas. So he decided to pull it down pit lane. And this is where the drama kind of comes into play and where, in my opinion, NASCAR made a completely awful call. Either way you look at it. There's two, there's two big ways you can look at it, and either way, it is a horrible call. Well, Brad Keselowski was going to restart on the inside lane of the front row on this restart, but decided to come down pit lane following the pace car down pit lane. Ryan Blaney was second in the running order, decided to pick the high side on this restart thinking there was a big possibility that Brad K could run out of gas on the restart. Well, coming into the restart zone, I think both drivers seemed 
unsure of who the control car was potentially. Ryan Blaney pulls into the restart zone thinking that he should be the leader. I think he should be, he should have been the leader. And Kyle Larson pulled up next to him. I guess I would have to look more into the rule. But flat out, Larson either I'm going to pull I'm going to pull the replay up here. Larson flat out either completely jumped this restart or this is a really bad call by NASCAR and potentially making Kyle Larson the control car on the inside. I'm also going to pull up a couple of comments Ryan Blaney made while he was in this in the car during this incident on the restart. I really wish that Ryan Blaney said maybe not cursing per se in his interview, but I wish he really because if you saw his interview, he kind of was saying stuff, but he was really, it seemed like he was really holding back a lot. And I feel like that's partially because he is a Penske driver. Penske drivers are a little more, if there's a button up team in NASCAR, that is Penske. They're a clean cut bunch for the most part. So I think Blaney was being really nice to Penske and the sponsors by not really getting into NASCAR right there. But I think he really wanted to. It seemed like he really wanted to in that interview that he had. Like I said, it seemed like both drivers could have potentially, I'm not saying for sure, both could have potentially been unsure of how this rule works pulling into the restart zone. And if that was the case, I think NASCAR had enough time to call off the restart and maybe extend it another lap. Something to avoid this controversy because you have people on my end, but then you have people on the other end of this situation. Discussions are already being had. But that wasn't the first thing I didn't agree with at the very end of this race. As on the very next restart, coming out of turn two, Ryan Priest gets spun around. And it looked like there was a potential at first of him getting going. But while the leaders are running through turns three and four, it's very clear at this point that Ryan Priest has a flat rear tire and he's not going to get that car moving. He's unable to move. NASCAR decides not to throw the caution. And the caution does not get thrown out until... Kyle Larson gets semi-close to the situation. And I'm not sure why NASCAR decided to do this. Was it laziness on not wanting to go through another restart? Is it also possible that they heard all the stuff, I think, at Nashville about all the restarts and they just didn't want a bunch of chaos again? Also possible. I think there was a lot of possibilities on why NASCAR decided not to throw that caution, but not a single one of those possibilities were because, oh, I think Ryan Priest can get going. That was not any one of their possibilities or the excuse of, oh, we didn't have enough time to react because I was calling caution for around 10 or 15 seconds before they hit the white flag and they did not throw it. Stop the cap. <laughs> NASCAR really needs to be more clear when it comes to these restarts and the rules when it comes to the restarts because this is just ridiculous. It's a horrible look. The return to the Brickyard, the Brickyard 400, a race I've been very excited for. A lot of people have been very excited for and it's also a race that's on NBC. We don't get a lot of races on NBC. A lot of the races are on USA and it's the last race before the Olympic break at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway the most historic track in American motorsport this is just an awful look for NASCAR for the cup series congratulations to Larson I do like Larson but this is a horrible look and I I agree with I agree with Blaney Blaney he they gave it to him they gave they gave it to Larson. They gave him the lead, and then Larson was able to win. It is what it is. I hated to see it. Uh, like I said, I'm a huge fan of Larson, and overall, it's a good story, and that's probably one of the reasons why NASCAR did it as well, 
like I said, there was a lot of potential factors on why NASCAR decided what they decided. They kind of make up some of these rules on the spot, unfortunately. And they just, a lot of these are judgment calls. I think they need to be more black and white sort of calls, a little bit more clear on the calls. I even saw some people on Twitter calling for the the overtime caution line that they used to put on the back stretch because of this. And it's just, it's all ridiculous. This was very unfortunate to see. One of the most boring races I've seen all year. And then having a very controversial finish with what with Kyle Larson winning, what Ryan Blaney would call the golden boy winning. It's just, it's real unfortunate. And don't, don't come at me in the comments. I'm a huge fan of Kyle Larson. I've I've worn my Kyle Larson shirt in these videos before. I really like Kyle Larson, but that that was awful. Even if Kyle Busch won the race, I would be saying the same thing. This is just awful, 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 awful look for NASCAR. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I cannot wait until we get to Richmond so we can move past this because this is a horrible look and it's going to be talked about for the next couple of weeks because of the time off for NASCAR because of the Olympics, which I've alluded to already maybe two or three times during this video. And to give my final thoughts, I think I've already given my final thoughts on the uh, Kyle Larson situation at the end of the race, but as a race as a whole, they just need to figure out a better package. They need to figure out a it was it was just awful because you saw drivers that were very slow, like Daniel Hemrick. I like Daniel Hemrick, nothing against Daniel Hemrick, but he was slow, and he was running up there in the top five like nobody's business. Kyle Busch, my favorite driver, was running 30th pretty much all day and then was able to run in the top five, top 10 with ease until he uh, wrecked himself. I liked the way the stages were set up. I didn't mention that earlier. I really liked the way the stages were set up where short pitting wouldn't really have been a thing. I don't think maybe short pitting would have been would have been a thing for the end of the second stage potentially, but overall short pitting wasn't really wouldn't have been a thing today if they had went green, but unfortunately it was it was either no racing or they were wrecking. It was just an awful race. But give me your thoughts down below. What did you think of the race? What did you think of the finish? Are you ups are you as upset about the finish as I am? Clearly I'm I'm making this fresh. I haven't even made my short yet, my short video yet. I wanted to do this fresh cuz I'm not very happy clearly, but I want to get everybody else's opinion on the finish of the race of the Brickyard 400. Let me know down below and Enjoy the Olympic break. I'm going to have a couple of videos come out over the weekend. I'm not exactly sure. what I have a couple of ideas, but I haven't locked down exactly what I want to do over the next two weekends. But one of the things I am planning on doing is going on my gaming channel, Boy Short Gaming, and doing some iRacing streams for the next two weekends, some longer streams than what I've been doing as of late. Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. But that will do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace.